So I have a lot of plants in my backyard, and the humidity levels of the air around us varies quite a lot, and I've noticed that that affects my plants. So I thought, how could we fix this with coating? Well, I have a humidity sensor that can connect to my Raspberry Pi, so I thought let's make a coating project out of it. So let's get into it. Alright, so first of all, in today's video, first of all, I'll introduce what the sensor we're going to be using today, which is called the humidure sensor. I'm going to be introducing that. And then I'll show you guys what we're going to be doing in today's project, including an architecture diagram. Then we'll get straight into the interactive demo, in which first we'll just make a program with the humidure sensor that will just print out the humidity level. Then we'll create a flask page to actually work with the data that we're getting and visualize it. Then we're going to be adding some HTML elements so that we can actually create a progress bar so that it shows the actual humidity level and it visualizes it. So let's get into it. First of all, what is a humidure sensor? Well, a humidure sensor, as the name suggests, it's just a sensor that it's supposed to calculate the relative humidity of the air. And to do so, it has to get the temperature of the air around it also, which is why it's called a humidure sensor, humidity and temperature combined. So now, in order to use this with our Raspberry Pi, we'd actually have to connect it to the breadboard, which will also connect to the GPIO pins. And I'll show you all the circuitry later on in the video. Alright, so now that you know what the humidure sensor is, what are we going to do with it in the project? Well, like I said before, we're going to be getting some humidity data, and first of all, I'll just print it out on the terminal screen just so that we can get a feel for how we're going to be using it. And it's going to be going to our Python program, so we want to visualize that on a web page. So the only logical way would be to do that with a Flask page, which, I've, which is a technology to create web apps, which I've used in multiple other videos. So in the Flask page, I'm going to have a little progress bar with HTML, and since our humidity data comes in percentages, it's going to fill up the progress bar based on the humidity level in the air. Then I'm going to add a legend, a gradient, some images, and it's going to look really nice. So let's get into the demo so that we can actually start this and work with the humidure sensor. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is show you guys the circuitry. So first up, we have our Raspberry Pi here, and this is a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, so it's the newest version. And then here on the GPIO pins, I've connected this cables, which connects to a GPIO extension board, and that's on a breadboard here, just so that I can connect my sensor. And then here we have the actual sensor, the humidure sensor, and that's connected with these cables on the breadboard in this specific circuit. And I've gotten this circuit from the providers of the Raspberry Pi sensor kit, which is SunFounder, and yeah, that's basically the circuits. And if you'd like a detailed diagram of the circuits, then I'll put a link for that in the description down below. All right, so now let's just get straight into the code. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use VNC Viewer, which is just like a server connection application so that I can actually remote into my Raspberry Pi so that I don't need to use an HDMI cable and connect it directly. So I've already created a connection. It's called RPI New for Raspberry Pi. And if I double click on that, then it should remote into my Raspberry Pi. So as you can see, searching network for VNC server, and then it should open up my Raspberry Pi, whatever it's seen. Yeah, so there we go. So I'm just going to expand this. And this is the Raspberry Pi. So it might not be very fast since I'm remoting into it and it's pretty small. But yeah, so here I have my folder structure. Since we're making a Flask app, I have my app.py here and an index.html. Okay, so this is the ready-made code that SunFounder provided me with. And SunFounder is the company that I got my sensor kit from, as well as my Raspberry Pi. So here, if you'd like this humidure sensor code, since it is pretty long, I'll give it to you guys in the link in the description down below. I'll have a GitHub. So here, all of this code, all this does is it gets the humidure sensor, the data, and then it prints it out on the screen. So I'm going to show you guys the most important part. It's at the bottom. So all of this calculation is to get the relative, the relative humidity. And then here, as you can see, we have the main function. And it just says while true result equals, and then we have a function, read DHT11, all that. So that's just basically the function to actually, first of all, get the humidity data and then calculate it to be the relative humidity. And then we're saying if we got a result, then it'll put it into this variable and then print it out. So yeah, that's just basically the gist of the code. And again, it's going to be in the description if you guys need it. And now the last thing we have to do is run it. 
So now this won't actually visualize the data. All it will do is print out the humidity and temperature. So that's the first step. Okay, so I'm going to go to terminal here. And if you click this icon here, that's the terminal for Raspberry Pi. And I'm going to have to go into my um, folder. So I'm just going to do that here, humature, and then clear that. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is run our program. So I'm going to say python3 app.py, which is my program name. And then as you can see, it says humidity 70, temperature 28C. And then it's going down because I'm not doing anything to it right now. But yeah, there we go. So we're actually getting the humidity. And I can actually test out to see if this will change. I just started touching it and now it's going way up because the humidity, my hand is wetter than the air. So as you can see, I stopped touching it and it's now it's going down again. All right, so there we go. Now we're successfully getting the humidity from a, temper from a humidity sensor. So that's the first step. Now the next thing we want to do is, this is just a very simple program that will just get the humidity. Now the next thing we want to do is actually visualize that with a Flask app. So that's exactly what we're going to do. It may be a little slow, but I'm going to type in from Flask, import Flask. So it's a little bit laggy because, like I said, oh, I didn't type enter. Okay, I'm going to click here, press enter. All right, so there we go. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is, if this is your first time using Flask, then I have a whole other introduction video to that. So you can check that out if you need to. But now to actually initialize our Flask app, I'm going to go to this line here, and then I'm going to initialize a variable called app. And then that's going to be equal to, and since we've imported this Flask module, I'm going to use the Flask function, and then say underscore, underscore, name, underscore, underscore. Now this will just initialize the Flask app and tell our program that, hey, I'm making a Flask app. Okay, so it's very laggy right now, but it's okay. Okay, now the last thing we need to do is, since we've initialized our app, all we want to do, let's just say the first step, instead of printing it out on the terminal screen, the humidity, we're going to maybe show the humidity on our Flask app. We're just going to print it out. So I'm going to go up a little bit. And here's where I would actually create the route for my Flask app. So outside of main function, I'm going to make an app route so that we can actually route a page to our Flask app. So I'm going to say at app, which is our variable that we created, dot route, and then in parentheses, we're going to have to actually add the route. So in this case, we're going to make it the default route of, for a page. So I'm going to say slash as the default route. And then here we'd initialize another function. So if that actually types, okay, then I'm going to initialize another function. And I'm going to say define, maybe let's call this index because this is just going to be this simple page. Oh, I added another enter here. And then in this index function, I'm, I want to do the same thing that's in the main function because the main function is what actually returns the humidity. So here I'm going to copy this whole thing, the while true, up until the result variable right here, this much. I'm going to copy that and then put it into our index function. And then as you can see, it copy pasted here. So then the next thing we need to do is actually print it out onto our web page. So here it says if result, then humidity temperature equals result. And so the last thing I have to do is actually return our variable to our Flask page so that it actually shows, which is humidity. So here I'm going to press enter, and then I'm actually going to show it using the return function. So I'm going to say return and then our variable. But since this variable is in an integer and it most likely, and Flask only shows strings, I'm going to use the str function, the string function, to convert humidity to a string. So I'm going to use str, and then I'm going to type in my humidity variable. So as you can see, there's a lot of lag here because it's a Raspberry Pi, but that's fine. Okay, so I'm using the str function so that we can actually convert it to a string and put it on the Flask web page. Now, that's the last thing we had to do, so I'm going to save it and run it. So now what it should do is, it should get the humidity like before, and instead of just printing it out on the terminal, now it should open up a Flask web page and create a server for us, and then with that server, it should show us the humidity on the server. So I'm going to save it and then go to terminal here. And then now the first thing we have to do is actually set our Flask app. So I'm going to say set Flask app underscore app equals to, and then app.py, which is our file name. And if you're creating a Flask app, then it has to be called app.py, otherwise it won't work. 
And then the last thing we can do is just flask run. And yeah, okay, so it's got us this like URL, so I'm gonna copy it. And then I'm going to go to Chromium. And Chromium is basically like just a web browser for Raspberry Pi. So I'm gonna open it up and then I'm gonna paste in the link and go there. And now what it should do is just at the top, it should show us our humidity level. So I've pasted it in and hopefully it loads. And yeah, so there we go. It's saying 64% humidity. And obviously it's it keeps fluctuating, but it's not gonna fluctuate on the web browser because we didn't tell it to reload. But if we reload it manually, then it might fluctuate. Although that would take way too long. But yeah, there we go. So as you can see, I reloaded it and then it went up. So it's gonna keep fluctuating. But yeah, so as you can see, we did create a Flask server, and in that Flask server, it showed us the humidity level. But now this doesn't look very good, does it? Well, we can fix that with HTML. We can actually visualize this data instead of just showing it using HTML. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now, in my folder structure, I have my app.py in the parent folder, and then I have another folder called templates, and if you don't know in Flask, if you, if you have an HTML file, then you're going to have to put it in a templates folder, and that's exactly what I did, I did, so that we can actually use in HTML in our Flask app. So I'm just going to copy-paste some very simple HTML code, and all it does right now is it'll just show us a progress bar. So let me just copy-paste that here. All right, so I'm gonna paste it. And yeah, so I'm just gonna go through this. So as we, you can see, we have all the simple things like titles and style and stuff. I'm actually gonna take that out. That's not needed right now. So here in the body, we have a progress tag and that'll just create us a progress bar. And right now the value is nothing and it's supposed to take a percentage value so that it can actually show that on the progress bar. So now I'm going to input the humidity variable from our Python code into our HTML file. So for the value, now I'm going to use a templating language called Jinja, which is pre-installed with Flask if you get Flask. So now it'll let us use our Python variables into our HTML file. But in order to use Jinja, I'm going to go up all the way at the top of the Python program. And I'm going to import another thing along with Flask. I'm going to import render template so that we can actually render our HTML pages. So let's just see if this works. Yeah, render template. So I'm gonna save this and then go back down. And then here, instead of just returning the string of humidity, in this case, we'd want to return an index.html file so that we can actually show whatever is on the index.html file. So I'm going to use the render template function, which we just imported, template. And then since that's a function, we're gonna use parentheses. And then now we want to import our index.html file. So I'm going to type in index.html, and this will vary based on whatever your HTML file is called. But now I'm going to add another thing. So now outside of this, as another parameter, if you ever include any variables that you want to include in your index.html file, like I said with Jinja, you can do that. But you're going to have to say humidity, which is our variable that we want to use equals to and then whatever you want to call it in your html file you would put that so in this case i'm going to call it humidity only so here humidity equals humidity and then now this will allow us to use jinja so that we can use the humidity variable in our html file and how to do that let me just show you let me go back here and then here as the value for the percentage i want to add the humidity variable so how I'm going to do that is with two curly braces, and then inside of that, that's the syntax for Jinja, two curly braces, and then inside of that, I'm going to say humidity, which is our variable, and then save that. And now what it should do is it should just add a progress bar, and then the value of that progress bar will always be ever-changing with the humidity variable. So now there we go. But again, like before, when we added the Flask page, we had to continually reload it so that it would keep on changing just like the data will change. But now what if we could just automate that so that it can keep on timed every, like maybe every two seconds it can reload by itself? Well, we actually can do that with a simple JavaScript function. And I'm gonna copy paste that here. So inside of my body tag, you can add a script tag and then add some simple JavaScript. In this case, we're creating a function so that every two seconds it will refresh. So here it's pasted. So we're creating a function called timed refresh. 
and then that will just set a timeout and then it'll reload the page every two seconds so now in this case as you can see the last line is it says window.onload that'll just run the function time refresh which we created and then this 2000 2000 means two seconds so if i put 5000 that would mean five seconds so yeah now we have this html file which we're going to show on our flask web app so there we go now what it'll do is it'll have a progress bar which will change which will fluctuate based on the humidity data and then it'll reload every two two seconds just so that it can change the data all right, so the last thing we have to do is actually run it. Okay, so I'm gonna go here and in terminal flask run. And then, yep, since I already have it open, I can just reload it and it should open up our progress bar. And yeah, there we go. So we have our progress bar right here. And as you can see, it's around the 60s, 70s, which is where it was before. And now every two seconds, you can see it's reloading. And then it should fluctuate, it shouldn't fluctuate way too much. But again, if I put my finger, then every two seconds it's gonna reload. So in a couple seconds, it may have a little bit of lag, but in a couple seconds, then yeah, as you can see, it's going up a lot. So it should be around 95%. And then I took it off and it should go back down. So there we go. Now we've created a progress bar along with our flask app and every two seconds it's reloading so that the data can actually fluctuate. And if you can see in the terminal logs, you can see this is how many times it's reloaded. Every time it reloads, then it adds another log here. So there we go, that worked. Now we've successfully created an app to visualize our humidity data. But now this isn't the last step. The last step is to actually make it look even better. So I have a thought in mind. Now, I want to visualize it even more so that you can really see how much is perfect for the plants, how much humidity is perfect for the plants, and when it's too wet and when it's too dry. So to do that, I'm going to add some images, I'm going to add some CSS, I'm going to do a bunch of things. So, let's get into it. Alright, now the first thing I'm going to do for that is I'm going to add a div tag, and this div tag in the CSS, I'm going to make it like a gradient so that you can really see how much is perfect for our plant. Now here, I'm going to add a div tag around our progress bar. So here, if I type in div, it's very laggy, as you can see. So yeah, I'm going to add a div tag here. And then since we want it to be around the progress bar, I want the progress bar to be like kind of inside of the gradient. So I'll show you guys what I mean. Let me just copy paste that. And then now I'm going to add some CSS for everything, just so that it looks a little bit nicer. So here, if you can see for the div tag, I've added as a background a linear gradient. So it goes from yellow, which is what's supposed to be too dry, to green, which is perfect, which is around 52%. Because that's around, I've researched, and that's the perfect amount of humidity for the plants. And then if we go to 94 to 100, then that's blue, which is too wet or too humid for the plant. And then for the progress, I've just added some height and width that doesn't do much. And then finally, just in case I want to like show give it to other users, I'm going to add a legend, which just shows the users that, hey, this is too little, this is too dry, and this is too wet. So to do that, I'm going to actually have to add an image, which I already have in my folder structure. So now to add an image in Flask, it's a different way to do it than regular HTML. So outside of the div tag, I'm going to add an image tag. And then here in the source, we'd have to add a little, a little bit of Jinja templating so that we can actually add the image because it's an outside file. OK, so now in the source, I'm going to, for Jinja, again, you need the two curly braces. And then inside of that, I'm going to use a function that Jinja uses called URL underscore four. And now that will just create the URL so that we can actually use the outside um, files. And then now I have this in my static folder. And if you're adding images, you have to put it in a folder called static inside of the parent directory. So I'm going to say static. That's not how you spell it. Static. And then outside of that, I'm going to say file name equals to, and then whatever the file name is called. In this case, it's called legend dot jpeg so let's just wait for that to load that's not how you spell static either okay so now that it's loaded then i'm going to add the outside curly braces and yeah that's all for adding the image 
Now I'm just going to do some light touch-ups just so that it looks a little bit nicer and then we can actually run this and now we should have a full-fledged application so that we can show users the humidity with a diagram. Alright, so as you can see I've added just some small things just to change the UI a little bit just to make it look a little nicer. And yeah, so now we've created a successful application that should be able to to get the humature data and now it'll put it in our flask page and it should show us the UI with a progress bar. So the last thing we have to do is run it. So I'm going to go back to terminal and say flask run and then again I'm going to go back to Chrome here and then reload it and now let's see if it works. Okay it's reloading and yeah okay so as you can see we have our gradient here and this is too dry, as you can see from the legend. This is too dry, which is yellow. This is a good humidity to have. And then the blue is too wet. And as you can see, we have the progress bar that every two seconds it's reloading and then it is changing and it's fluctuating. So now again, I'm going to put my finger onto the humidity sensor. And since my finger has more humidity or more moisture than the air around it, then it should go up. So I'm gonna put my finger on it and then let's just see if it goes up. So now, again, it's going to take a little bit of time since it reloads every two seconds. And now, as you can see, it's gone up a lot as I put my finger. And if I take it off, then it should go back down. But yeah, there we go. So now we've created an application in Flask that gets humature data. And then it takes it, puts it into HTML. And then we've created a graph here to visualize the data. So there we go. That worked. So that was creating a Flask app to visualize data from the Humature sensor in Raspberry Pi. And I'm really enjoying making these sort of mini projects in my YouTube channel, so stay tuned for more. Thanks very much for watching. If y'all had any doubts, please comment down below. I'd love to help you out if you're stuck with any Humature sensor questions or issues. Please like, subscribe, all that jazz. Until then, you can learn anything.